So a call to order. You want to start, Rob? Oh, Rob Horgan. John Smolligan. Kathy Roz. Sierra Gorglione. Sue Fitch. Anybody else? And I'm um, Russ. Mm. Me, Rob, John, Sue, and Sierra. So we're all here. We'll start out with approval of the minutes for the regular meeting from April 25th, 2023. Any comments on those minutes? Yes. Go ahead. Um, I did not join the meeting um, when the first, I don't have the minutes in front of me, but there was the, let's see, the, oh, they're right here. Um, for the first uh, vote, I was not, I didn't join the meeting. I wasn't at the meeting right away. It has me down that I voted for that and I didn't. Okay. Um, we'll have to correct that, Julie. Because I think it has me joining. Yeah, Julie, I think it has me joining the meeting like at 7.05. And right. the other thing I have to say is I never remember Russ recognizing that I had joined the meeting. So I didn't vote on anything for the last meeting that I know of because I didn't think I was seated again. Oh. I thought you were seated. Hmm. Yeah, I thought I seated you, so. I um, maybe I missed it with this bad communication, but I just wanted to bring it up. So, all right, they could look at the tape and, and make sure this is correct. Okay, so so sorry about that, but I wasn't sure. That's all right. So you're I'll saying you you weren't? I'm sorry, you weren't seated at all for the McDonald application. You no. hadn't joined. Okay, so you weren't here for that. Right. Okay. And I don't believe that I was recognized but like I said I was having a bad um connection so I so I believe I remember not voting because I didn't believe that I was recognized as being at the meeting at the time so if you guys want to review that yeah I'll make a motion to table the minutes so that they <clears throat> that they could review that okay so I'm thinking um the only other thing that would have been voted on was the adjournment. But so, okay, we'll review it. Yeah. That's my motion. Do I have a second or is there anything else that needs to be looked at? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Okay, what's next? Um, Squire Farm um, LLC. Um, this is for a driveway. Rob will step down and I'll seek Kathy Ross for this application. Um, Sierra and I went and walked it. I, I did meet Rob out there beforehand. He told me that he's gonna move the entrance of the driveway from where it is now. I'm not sure, uh, I forget why, but to get it further away from a little wetland area, a little intermittent stream. So do we have a map that we, we can put do. up? We uh, do. Ross, this is Doug DeVesta. I'm, I'm representing the applicant. Okay. Um, Doug, why, why is the driveway going to be straightened instead of going into the existing it's got better access. Again, this is Doug DeVesta, a professional engineer representing uh, Squire Farms at LLC. Um, the previous app, the previous uh, plan came off of the existing driveway. If I can share, if I can share the screen, I can show, you know, I can point it out to you a little better. Sure, go ahead. Uh, let's see, let me get this thing up. And they won't let me share it right now. I'm going to stop the show. There we go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, excuse my primary screen. Uh, 
Okay, so, so this is the same plan, I just colored up, make it a little easier for you to see. Um, this is the existing garage that you see along South Street. There's the driveways right in here. We originally had to come up and made it almost like a 180 degree turn up into the property with the driveway coming down a little further. That was a very awkward entrance way. So what we did, we moved it about 50, 60 feet um, to the north, closer to the existing barn that's there now and, per and went perpendicular to, the, to South Street, much better access way into the property. So it's gonna continue up through the property um, following up about an eight, about 800 foot long driveway with a house site on the um, upper west end of the uh, field. Wetlands were flagged by uh, Mike Temple of Nutmeg Soil Scientist Service in um, 2018, which is located right here in the central portion of the property. The red line I'm seeing I'm highlighting right now is the upland review area. Um, a couple of issue, a couple of things going on. We have the um, we have a septic system located behind the existing house, uh, right about right here. Um, we have the septic tank at the house. So what's, we're gonna have a temporary disturbance to the upland review area, which I'm following right now for the uh, effluent pipe from the septic tank down to the leaching fields. So we got about 2,400 square feet of temporary disturbance um, through the upland review area on the south side. On the north side, the driveway is actually following an old farmer's road which is see through a dotted line coming through under the existing driveway, come on up and then it branches off um, right about in here. So the areas that were just having more, have a more permanent disturbed area would be um, right through the central portion around station uh, two plus 50 up to um, six, six, point, six plus two, two five, because there's an intermittent water course that comes from offsite uh, through, through our site and then continues down towards the wetlands. There was an existing um, 15 inch RCP culvert that was installed by the farmer years ago uh, that will be relayed underneath the existing dri on the proposed driveway and continue, um, continue the flow from the intermittent stream in the same direction as it was before. Um, and there, was, there will be um, inf infiltration swales located on both sides of the driveway to collect any runoff from the driveway and infiltrate it back into the ground. Um, for the roof runoff, we've got, um, We've got a series of uh, hollow uh, plastic chambers that okay. will collect the runoff. I found from the this roof on areas. the web for a series of. Check it out. I don't know what that oh, was. Series, like. series jumping in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have hollow, cha hollow chambers that are collecting the uh, runoff from the roof areas. So that's basically it. So again, this disturbed areas are going to be the upland review area for the driveway portion and a temporary disturbance for the septic line coming from the house down to the leaching fields. Uh, if there's any questions, I'd be glad to, to answer them. Doug, on the, the roadway, is there any drainage needed or proposed there where the driveway is gonna hit the road? No, because again, we have infiltration trenches all the way down uh, okay. alongside there. We don't suspect to have any water coming off the driveway onto okay. the road. All right. Anybody have, have any questions? I, yeah, I, I just had a question. The, so I, I'm sorry, Doug, I'm, I'm not an expert on reading the map, but um, the the line right up next to the driveway, help me. What is that? The line right there? Is that this line here? Uh, well, that one, too. Yeah, that's and, silk fence. Okay. That's silk fence that's going along the driveway there, along in here, and then all along the um, proposed sewer line from the house down to the leaching fields. And then we also are providing uh, on hay bales, any, any tracking pad at the intersection of South Street and the driveway, hay bales at the entrance of the driveway. Then every 50 feet, we have stone check dams to, in, during, during construction to keep the flows down and make sure you have any concentrated flows um, heading down, down the road. So you yeah. have silk fence there, we have silk fence along the um, north side of the driveway, uh, adjacent to the um, intermittent water course and on the inside of the turn right here as well. Oh, gotcha. And then, and then the the soil stockpiles, those mm -hmm. are just collections. Can you just comment on those? Yeah, that's just the, the soil stockpiles area. You you strip off the topsoil, you you put them in a the stockpile area, um, and then reuse them. It's just a temporary storage area uh, for soils during during construction. Those okay. stock those are just temporary, and they'll be 
um, you know, removed once the once the um, driveway is completed and the and the shoulders are graded out. Okay, gotcha. It. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I just have uh, two questions. Um, one is this: I'm just trying to get my orientation because it's where's the other driveway that goes up to the property that comes off South Street? Is because is this separate? Oh, it's for, piece? yeah. This is separate. Yeah, that that okay. was further. That, that's further north, sale. Further north. Okay. Okay. Right. So this is by where the house and the bar, uh, the house and the exit, little house right by the road is. Correct? Yeah. This is the old Squire's house. Okay. Which is almost, like, right. almost across the street from Squire Road. Okay. And then my only other question, though, I had for you was um, the intermittent stream is marked in the blue, correct? That's correct. Yeah. And you said that it can, then you it uh, goes underneath the. Uh, pipe that's existing there from the farm, right? Correct. Okay, and then it goes down into that area that's shaded green into the wetlands? That's correct. It, that's, that's what we, it's, it's, not, it's not defined once it gets past this drive, once it gets past the culvert uh, okay. currently. So All it's right. really not really well defined in the area, but it, it, it most likely will head down towards the wetlands pocket right in here. Okay. I was just wondering, because you had, you know, just simple question. You had made the comment that it continued down and I thought, well, you know, I was just wondering why it wasn't marked on the map. That's yeah. all. No, I mean, I think Russ, when you've been out there, you probably didn't even notice it once it gets past the stone wall here. It might even go into the stone wall and then just, it just uh, dissipates out. But yeah, you know, I've been out there numerous times and there's no, no defined channel once it gets past the, cul the existing culvert there. Okay, so the stone wall is almost like a filter for what might be coming through. Okay. Possibly, yes, yeah, possibly. It, it spreads out after the pipe, really. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Sierra and I walked this. I, I don't have any concerns with this application. Uh, Sierra, do you have anything? to say about the site walk or your concerns on this? No, that's pretty unremarkable. <clears throat> that's a good way to put it. <laughs> but no offense. <laughs> I mean, in terms of wetlands. Yeah, okay. So with that, beautiful I'll look for- spot. A... Beautiful spot, though. <laughs> with that, I'll look for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve this as a regulated activity. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. Motion carries. Thank you, Doug. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. So I'll see Rob back on for Kathy. And we'll move to the next application. Okay, it's going to be um, Grassy Hill Property 70, let's see, 75 Old Roxbury. No, that's where they are. Um, yep. 34 Old Roxbury Road. Yep. And Brian yes, this, is here. Right. This is for an addition of a wood deck on the back of the house. Uh, Sierra and I went and looked at that. And uh, I'll say it was pretty unremarkable uh, relating to wetlands. I, I, it's really a, it's just the deck and the wetlands is way in back and. No yeah, it didn't seem like the wetlands were anywhere near it. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to approve this as a non-regulated activity. Second. Do, uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Brian. Hey, thanks. Yep. Yeah. Let's see our next one. Um, we're going to 65 Painter Ridge Road. Pull it up for you. I almost forgot about this one, so I went up there late yesterday afternoon. Uh, After the fact application. Yeah, this is an after the fact. Um, is the landscape architect here? 
Is anybody here on this application? Could you go to the map? Yes. Zoom in so that you. The map is that was submitted scanned over is very light. This is as dark as we could get it. Really? Yeah. That's hard to read. You know, there is a map of the property that shows a lot of wetlands, but you you probably don't have that loaded, right? Um, that's the only other map we have. That one there, could you focus on it or zoom in? Yes. Yeah, you see the wetlands, everybody? The The line with the triangles on it? Yeah, I see it. And while this activity is very close to um, the wetlands, it's it's all cross gradient, and it's a beautiful property, it really is. Um, it's, it's you know, and I think what they want to do isn't a problem, but I wish they were here because I had a couple questions. So, and this is the first night we got this, right? Yes, they submitted this sometime in the past few weeks. Okay. Yeah. So, so we we don't have to act on it. If anybody wants to go look at it, you can see it from the road. It's sixty five. It's on the corner of Davenport and Painter Ridge Road. It's sixty five, and you get. You could just look at it right there without even going on the property, but it's okay to go on the property because it gave us permission. So um, yeah. before the next meeting, well, you know, whoever wants to go out, go out, bring somebody with you, but don't uh, don't go with three. And that that's for any of these. You, you know, you don't have to be appointed. Anybody could go out who wants to. Um, you just got, you have to keep it to two members or a third member would make a meeting. And you're not to really talk about the application with anybody that may be there. You're just there to look and any questions you may have um, should be asked at the meeting. So everything's done in public. Um, I, I know that I used to assign people, but um, it's, it's best anybody who wants to go could go, and I'll, and I'll just make sure that somebody goes, okay? So so we don't come to a meeting and, you know, we all say, oh, I thought you went. Well, I thought you went. So I'll, I'll manage that, and we'll go from there. But in the meantime, Julie, would you leave a note for Karen to contact the landscape architect and ask him to be at the next meeting? It's important. Yes, I will do that. Okay, thank you. With no a better problem. map. Yeah. And we'll ask them to re to have it submit a better map. Yeah. And yeah, because they, they sent over a PDF and that's the one that we got we got. Wow. Nobody could read it, so okay. All right. Not a problem. Okay. So from here we're going to 17 Hemlock Road. Let me pull that up. Is this new? This is a new one, yes. Okay. I, I just wondered if I forgot to go one place. Nope, nope. This is new business. Um, Martinelli. And ATV track. Right. Is there a map at all with it? Okay. But not of the ATV track, just, just showing the property. Could you zoom in as those crosshatch areas wetlands? I can't tell. I what lot are tell. we looking at? Lot C? Good question. I mean, all right. Jason Martinelli did tell me he he couldn't uh, he couldn't attend tonight, uh, but I I told him do not do any more work. Uh, 
And so Julie, we need to tell them we need a map showing the track and where the wetlands are and, 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 the inter, and the stream that starts in the middle of the field and then uh, there's water blowing out of the ground in the middle of the field and then it's the beginning of a stream. So what happened here is I got some calls about ATVs driving somewhere in the woods around there. And I knew that uh, Mr. Horrigan lived there, Bill Horrigan, that, but he's the chairman of zoning. And I asked Bill if I could come over and take a look at it because he looks down at this field and he said, sure. So I went there and a track, a circular track had already been dug out. There was no gravel on it. This is, this is a big field. It used to be part of a farm and uh, a circular track was dug out and where that stream crosses that track was just going through the mud and crossing the track. And you can see they had been riding there and riding right through it. Uh, I walked down there with Bill to see if it was truly wetlands. Um, and while I was there, Mr. Martinelli showed up. And luckily, Mr. Martinelli didn't throw me off the property because I really had no right to be there without, without making him aware. But he, he was cool about it. And I, he told me, I said, you know, it looks like there could be some wetlands here. It's a pretty wet field. And he told me, no, it was an approved building lot. There are no wetlands. And I said, well, what about the stream that begins right there? And he said, well, that dries up during the summer and it's not really there all the time. And so I, I kind of was off guard because I'm on the guy's property and I really shouldn't have been there. So I said to him, what we should do is you should submit an application, what you want to do. Um, you, you should put a pipe in where that stream crosses so you're not driving through it. That's That should have been done before you even started writing ATV. So submit an application. And if there truly no wetlands as, as you're telling me, there, there shouldn't be a problem. So um, afterwards I asked John Cody to take over because it could be an enforcement matter. And John sent me a map showing an actual building lot map, which is better than this, showing wetlands all in that field and the intermittent stream. So I asked John to tell Mr. Martinelli, he really needs to submit an application with, with everything that we need in an application. Meaning I need a plan, uh, I need to see where the wetlands are so that at the meeting we could talk about it. Um, in the meantime, I think they're still driving he told me that he built it because he was concerned about his son driving an ATV through the woods, like, um, you know, the unfortunate incident that happened in Roxbury with a young, young boy losing his life because he was driving an ATV in the woods and he hit a tree. Um, so I understood that. But uh, is John on, John Cody? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, Russ, it's John Cody. Yep. John, have you talked to him at all? I mean, to, to say to him, you need a better application, you know, but, well, the application's in, but, but we need a map showing where this track is. And it's a big track. I mean, it's not a, some little thing. And it was all mud. It was, the whole thing was mud. So um, he needs to, if you could contact him, he really needs to take this seriously and not take it, okay, I built it, here's a map, give me a permit kind of attitude because he needs to understand that there are wetlands on the property. Everything he did is a regulated activity and he needs to go through the process like anybody else. He needs a map that's surveyed that shows where the track is. You can't just draw a line when you have wetlands and you might have put a track right through the wetlands. And if the wetlands haven't been flagged, they need to be flagged. They, the, the survey needs to be provided that shows where the track is in relation to the wetland. 
where the stream is, and I think it's a stream. I don't think it's inter intermittent seeing the water that was blowing out of it. It's, it's an artesian condition. Artesian conditions are where groundwater is forced up to the surface and blows out. And where this is blowing out, it's a little stream. Need to see that, a, a, you know, a design for a pipe. I told him he didn't really need an engineer, and I don't think he does because it's not a lot of water. It's not a big pump. You don't really need a big pipe. But I told him at, at least an eight inch would be a minimum. And But he needs to take it serious. I know he had a graduation tonight. I get that. Um, so we're, we're going to accept this application tonight unless somebody – feels different unless somebody feels we shouldn't accept the application because it is incomplete. But I think we could accept it and then set up site walks so people, so everybody on the commission could see it and then come back to the next meeting with the expectation based on John making the contact that we have a full application with a surveyed map and, and a plan. Like, is he going to fill this track with gravel, uh, where, where's, you know, it, what's he going to do? Is he going to just drive through the mud? Um, but my biggest concern is where is this track in relation to the wetlands that was on the building plot plan where it, it is a legal building lot, but um, that, that just means that you skirt wetlands to build a house on the dry part of the property which I think is much further down uh, away from the road in front of Kim Tester's house, as opposed to where he built this track. So he needs to understand this is serious because there are wetlands and we need to make a decision. We need to have the information to make a decision whether this is viable or not. And if we don't get that information, then we'll have no choice but to deny it as an incomplete application. Uh, Russ, no problem at all. He was in the office today and we were discussing this and uh, he's gonna come in tomorrow and I'll relay that information to him. All right, and make sure that he knows he shouldn't be using this right now. Yeah, yeah, that's no problem at all. You, you know, he didn't, and, and the commission needs the time to make the right decision and the better information we could get, the better decision we can make. Hey Russ, I, yes. I have one question. I I have not seen this, um, even though it's uh, below my my brother's house. But is there a concern for stabilizing what's been disturbed? No, because it's all flat. Okay. It's all flat, so all the water's just sitting in the track, and the stream is fine as long because it hits the field, and and it goes about. 30 feet before a stone wall. So any silt was trapped by it in the fields. You could see that well before the stone wall. And then on the other side of the stone wall is all wetlands. Would we treat this as a, uh, like a driveway application or something like this? Cause I, I don't think I've ever been involved in a ATV track. We've never had one. We've never had an ATV proposal. Actually, Brian Cartagena might have submitted one for a race car track a long time ago. And and it was a little race car track, but it was going to be paved. And there were, there were wetlands, but they were like 70 feet away. So if, if this is a field and it, and there are no wetlands, like I thought, like I was told when I was there, I, I really wouldn't be that concerned about it. Because the wetlands on the other side of the wall are protected by the wall, and they're, you know, thirty feet away, and I, he might have put a pipe in, because I did tell him to put in a pipe temporarily, because I didn't want him driving through, through a, a stream, um, and and I thought the stream was the only regulated issue, which wouldn't be an issue if there were no other wetlands, because put a culvert in it really not a big impact so no I, I I don't I don't think it's like a driveway but it is like a driveway it's a track that's going to be gravel that ATVs are going to drive round and round in well I guess my my 
Right. My only question would be is we typically require an engineer to design a driveway. So if this is similar to a driveway, we would want to require an engineer to design the thing. Well, I don't think so because it's flat. And it's not going to have cars driving up and down it. It's flat. And then did you say that it was, um, they said it was an approved building site? It is an approved building lot. It so is an they're in building. Okay. There, and is no there like info? But all that means here is that it meets the acreage, uh, they looked at wetlands and determined that oh, okay. uh, wet, wet, wetlands, although they may be there, but you could still build on it because, you know, there's less than two acres of wetlands in comparison to a three acre lot. I forget okay, what the so rule it was is. Usable but... at, some, at some spot on the property, but not the entire property. Right. I don't, I don't, okay. I don't know. I haven't seen a wetlands map. Is there one, John? Uh, I can try and pull up the old one from the uh, proposal for the building site. Um, this is the one that we do have on site. It does show the wetlands and a little triangle edge popping up. On Looks lot like three. Different. On the lot three. Lot right? three is that's right where the track is. Oh, so it's lot three because you can't. I mean, he submitted the map. We can't even tell what the lot is. Yeah, that that last so one is far left. So that that cross house area is showing wetland. Correct. Okay, but that that is for to get approval for a building lot. What he needs is for a soil scientist to go out there. That stream has to be definitely mapped and surveyed. And a soil scientist should take a look at the whole field because I, I saw wetland soils when I was out there from what he dug through. Look like clay soil to me. I so he ne he needs to provide that information. If if all the lot is is that one little part of wetlands, then again, you know, a track could be a viable uh, a viable thing to build. Um, but we need the information to determine that. I can relay that. Yeah. Right, Russ, how would we access how, this how property does, to go see it? Pardon. How would we access this property to go see it? Well, when the applicant submits an application, then you have a right to go see it. You just have to tell him when. And no, some I, applicants say, you could go out there anytime you want. You don't have to let me know. I don't live there. So, John, would you confirm that with him tomorrow that uh, he has no problem with the commission just walk on the property? I can do that. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, we, we come in off a of hemlock to see this. That's what I'm trying yes. to. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm sorry. It comes off of Weller's Bridge Road, right, John? I mean, uh, the, he, he was driving a truck in there and it was from Weller's Bridge Road, from what the, I can tell. The access does come from Weller's, but if you come on in off hemlock, you just have to walk over the hill. You can get a good, easier well, access that way. Well, Bill Horgan will let you walk through his yard to get down there. If, exactly. If, and what number is Bill? Uh, my brother, but it's I right after the it. Sugar Cube House. You can't miss it. <laughs> yeah, you know the big white house on Hemlock, right on, right when you go on Hemlock. There's a big white house on your left, and I'm talking from Weller's Bridge. Yeah, from the four-way stop sign, you go on to Weller's on the Hemlock, and on your left is a big white house. Bill's house is after that. It has two numbers on it. I think 119 and 121, if I remember right. Sounds and right. Bill's house is straight ahead. There's a house that curves off to the right, a small house that you'll see. But just go straight ahead and walk past Bill's house, and it's a big hill down to the field. Okay. And, John, confirm with Bill he doesn't have a problem with, with that we're going to access it through his, through his yard. I'll do that. That's easy. Hey, Russ. Um, just a, hold on, hold on one second, because I want to do one at a time. Rob made the point that this should be engineered. It should be an engineered, designed track. No, I just brought it up. I didn't. I wasn't right. sure. Well, you brought it up. Well, I'm not. You know, I'm not the king of the king of the wetland. I, 
it's a good point, and I'd like to hear. Does anybody else feel that it, it needs an engineer? I, because we need to let this applicant know what we want now to make this go through smoother. I, I I made the point that I don't believe it needs an engineer, but that that doesn't mean that others might feel differently. Yeah, I, I would like to know more of exactly what he's going to do and and take a look at it. You know, sorry, but um, you know, if it's just a dirt track and it it's in a field, it's you know away from wetlands and he uh, takes care of that that intermittent stream or, or the stream there okay that's one thing but you know right now i'm kind of in the dark with this yeah okay. I, russ that i was just wanted to ask uh what is um what, what 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 does it mean what does an atv track mean is he bringing in phil is he bringing in no no he dug he dug it he dug the, it was a field he dug all the grass out, you know, he dug the turf layer out. So he took about a foot or two off and made a track. So what's there now is dirt, but it's mud, really, and which I guess is fun for ATVs, but not if it's wetland. And, um, and, and, and so and it says, I'm just trying to go back to the application because it's maybe we just are looking for clarity in the application. Like it just doesn't really say what. No, the application's incomplete. It doesn't even fill out and. Description of alternatives, project description. Well, that's you know, you know what? Now I'm thinking about it. We the probably, application's incomplete, really. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I I I think I think we need to deny this because this application is woefully incomplete. I, I, really agree. Do. I, I, I didn't even look at that. He he's <laughs> he's not taking this seriously. He's taking it as. Uh, you know, it's already built. It's my land. It's an approved building lot. OK, I'll be a good guy and submit an application. And he's not doing what the law, the state law requires. And I'd love to um, I'd love to keep this going in the right direction for him, but he's not helping us. So so we could do that. But if anybody wants to go out and look at it, um, you could go. As long as John confirms with Bill, you could go to Bill's house and see it from the hill. You just can't, you can't really go down to the property and look if, unless Jason says it's fine. Jason doesn't need to have an application to say, look, I'm going to be submitting an application. I have no problem with people coming out to the site. So they're up on it. I, I would be happy to walk it, but I'd like to um, have Jason's approval to actually go down. Right. So, John, we'll leave it to you to see if Jason gives us approval. If not, we need Bill's approval anyway to cut through his property because it's an easier way to, to see unless Jason flags on the road, Wellersbridge Road, where he comes in. And then we'd be glad to come in there. But it's, it's you know, he doesn't have a stake up like like we require a stake be up so we with a flag on it so we know this is, this is how you access it. So, so you need I'll to do, have a, a talk with him. Sure. So what I'll do tomorrow is when he comes to the office, I'll have a conversation about this application. And uh, after that conversation, I'll reach out to the members and see which direction he wants to go, whether he wants to pull this, resubmit with a full application with all the other information that you want and uh, access to the property. Right. And he definitely needs to hire a survey and a wetland scientist. An engineer is up to him. If he wants to represent himself, he's got that right. But he needs to show up at the meeting. Yeah, I'll, I'll relay everything to him. We'll see where it goes. I'll, I'll, I'll pass on the word. So what I'm hearing from the commission is we're not comfortable with accepting this application because it's incomplete. Correct. Or does I mean, somebody want to make that motion? I'll make a motion to deny this as incomplete. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. So carry. Okay, next. Oh, wait, one other thing on this. We did get a letter from an attorney that was retained by Bill Horrigan. Um, did everybody read the letter? You want to bring the letter up? Yes.
So his, his number is 21 Hemlock Road, but it, it's on a stake that says 19 and 21. So there seems to be a Class A2 survey of this property, John. I'm sorry, Russ. There, it says, based on a review of a Class A2 survey of the subject property. If we go uh, back to the map that was uh, on the screen prior to, that's the one. Well, I, I, then I don't know why the lawyer's saying that, based on a review, because that A2 doesn't say anything, other than there's a wetland where where he's not really driving. Yeah, that's, I can't but speak on Mr. Horrigan respectfully objects to the issue of an inland wetland permit for the activity. He also requests that an order be issued requiring immediate remediation during this growing season of the damage thus far caused. Since this activity poses a significant impact on protected areas, I also request on behalf of Mr. Horrigan that a public hearing be held on the application. The property is 15 acres, and I'm told that much of the property on the su southern end is not in a wetland or protected uh, upland area. Accordingly, if an ATV track is to be cut, doing so on the southern portion of the property is clearly a feasible and prudent alternative to the statutorily protected location currently proposed. Please include this letter in the record pertaining to the Martinelli application. Thank you for the kind attention. Uh, Randy DeBella. Okay, and the date on this letter? I, I can't see it. May 16th. May 16th, 2023. Okay, so it's right into the record. So for Mr. Horrigan and Mr. DeBella, the problem is we denied an application because it is incomplete. So we can't do anything like call a public hearing, deny the application for other reasons, or or deny it based on the fact that there, there may be an alternative. As we all know, we've asked Mr. Cody to share the information that we need an A2 survey showing the design of the track. We want the property looked at by a wetland scientist and any wetlands, including a stream, which is not on the A2 survey, uh, to be flagged and put on a survey. And that feasible and prudent alternatives really need to be looked at. Because if there is a place you could put this track that doesn't cross that stream, then that absolutely is a feasible and prudent alternative, just to save them time. In the, so the commission has taken this step by step. So right now where we're at is we're requesting that a full application with all the information required under our regulations be submitted by the next meeting. Hey, Russ. One yeah. question: If they're going to flag the wetlands, um, uh, you know, should we be notified when that's done, so that we can look at it after that? I mean, I, I'm confused because they, I, they're not; they don't really have an application because we're denying it. Well, so, no, we can't make them do anything, Rob. We could go look at it if he gives us permission. Okay. But but I don't want to wait till it's flagged. You could go look at it. I think everybody needs to look at what's there. Okay. Otherwise, you you know, I've been there, so I know what what's there. Uh, Russ, I do have a question. Tomorrow during my conversation with him, if he decides to pull this and not go forward with anything, is there a chance that I could um have we could give him the ability to restore that property? If he doesn't have an application, he's going to have to restore it. Because exactly. We're not That's gonna let it be as is because clearly it's a regulated activity. That right. stream makes the whole thing a regulated activity. Does it necessarily mean that uh it can't be done? No, it could be done, but we need more information. And especially as Mr. DeBella points out, that there's enough land on the southern acre southern part because it is 15 acres then that stream which is the source cl cleanest water ever coming out of the ground then then that that feasible and prudent alternative has to be looked at so jason needs to understand there's a process 
and he needs to follow the process. If he doesn't want to follow the process, then he needs to put all that sod back and restore it back to what it is, pull the, pull the pipe that he might have installed for the stream and put everything back together where a notice of violation is going to be issued. Um, is that something I can grant permission for him to do prior to the next meeting if it goes that course? Or do we, yeah, should we and, and request I don't think a plan? We, Pardon? Should we, in that case, should we request an, uh, a restoration plan? Let's take that up at the next meeting. Everybody needs to go see this. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, yeah. Let's take it up. I don't want to start demanding things before I even know what his next course of action is. Okay? Yep. All right, let's Good. move on. Okay. Um, new application, 67 Squire Road. Um, D. Mateo for soaking pool, spa, terraces, steps, retaining walls, and two rain gardens. Hi, Julie. This is, uh, for the record, this is Sam Saban with uh, Saban Landscape Architects. Can you hear me? Yes, we yeah. can hear you. Hi, Sam. Great. Hi, Russ. How are you? Good. Good. So, um, Julie, if you don't mind pulling up L6, uh, it's the last uh, plan. It's the sedimentation and erosion control plan, and I can uh, give a presentation on on the property with those with that uh, those ducks. It's the last page in that uh, in that set. Okay. We can kind of go into detail. This is Plan. 67 Squire. Correct. Okay. So um, this this is a you know, this is a ten acre parcel um, on a, on a on a kind of a sloping uh, a pretty dramatically sloping lot that's going down to uh, Jack's Book Brook down kind of at the bottom of the uh, of the property. It's a beautiful site. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And the uh, the proposed activity is an in ground soaking pool, eight by twenty, and an in ground spa, an eight by eight. Um, we, the idea is we'll be terracing the space um, in between the existing residence and the guest house, uh, which are the two buildings. If, if there's three buildings you see there, it's the two buildings. Um, if you could scroll down just a little bit, Julie. I don't know if this is just my screen that can't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Go it's that gray more, area. Julie. Go up more. We don't need to see the, the specs on the top. That might be the. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Perfect. No, there you go. That's that's it. So that 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 gray shaded area is the uh, is the project site. So the idea here is to uh, is, is 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 to terrace the site to 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 in, in, to install the uh, the soaking the small soak, soaking pool and the eight by eight spa spa. The proposed How far site is, is that from the brook, Sam? I can't read it. Uh, the 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 corner of that lower boulder wall is forty eight feet. Okay. And what's there so, now? Uh, currently, it's just a sloping site. There's, um, I included some pictures um, on the project narrative, but on the, if you, if you uh, it's just, a, it's, there's uh, five trees that woods? you would need to come Is down. Woods? Yes, there's five it's trees woods. that need okay. to come it's down. It's undeveloped. Right, correct, yes. Okay, yep. all right. Um, the regulated area, the 100 foot setback is that kind of darkish um, uh, arcing line that kind of goes through the center of the main residence, if you could see that, kind of yeah. following the same curve as the river. So uh, we're just, you know, on, 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 the, on the far side of the, uh, the just on the, on the uphill side of the pool, um, it's, it's just inside of that. And yeah, to the, the downhill side, we're supporting with a boulder wall that, is, that comes within 48 feet. Um, it, it essentially plateaus down below that retaining that existing retaining wall that's holding up the auto court and then falls away down to Jack Crook rather quickly. Um, the idea with the, you know, we, we, we look, we did look at um, uh, uh, an alternative, which had um, previously been discussed with prior owners about potentially putting it up above the garage, um, which is on that uphill side, on the, on the uh, up, 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 upside uh, up portion of the plan. Uh, that yeah. building is set in, kind of set into the slope um, the issue that we ran into there was uh, just the um, the dramatic amount of cut that would need to happen on that slope. 
um, to, to, to accommodate it. We were, we had shot in, uh, uh, topographic models up there. We were looking at a 15 to 20 foot, um, retaining wall in that area that just, it, it was, it was very dramatic for, for what he wants to do on the property. Um, the idea with the, uh, with the, you know, the, the, the proposed is using kind of, let's say he essentially just wants to use these as kind of smaller, just plunge pools um, in the, uh, in, in kind of a Japanese soaking tub fashion, where rather than a big lap pool or anything like that, just smaller things that he could, uh, smaller uh, 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 water areas that he could use from the main house. And then also um, the, the guest house, which is the building just to the left of that, of that pool area. Um, currently there's a catch basin that's kind of just in the driveway uh, in that auto court, just off of that circular uh, Belgian block uh, paving area that is just basically just captured and then just sent downhill. Cur what we'd like to do is introduce a series of drains that are um, behind the retaining wall above the pool, within the deck of the pool, and above the boulder wall that's holding up kind of the, the downside of the pool, and direct those into two, you know, equally spread those into two rain gardens um, that would, you know, be biofilters to filter the rainwater and then send that into, you know, a, a, a high level, you know, high intensity storms into a high level overflow that would be sent down into, into, into level spreaders um, that would, you know, disperse any sort of, uh, any sort of increased drainage activity. Um, uh, the material used, we'd like to use, you know, on the site, it's, a, it's a, essentially a balanced cut and fill here. There's not a dramatic change you know the idea is you know i think the original uh, concept of the plan came because this area does level out somewhat before it level you know goes down to this goes down to this to the stream area um so you know the idea is to try and use um you know uh, uh, a, a small area of disturbance and localize the uh the, any sort of disturbance so that we can um uh, you know, not increase, you know, minimize any increased runoff and, uh, and, 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 and any impact to the, to the property. He, he you know, Joe DiMatteo is, uh, the owner, he's on with us today, his, um, and I'll let him add any comments if he'd like to, but he, you know, he really loves the property. It's a beautiful view to Jack's Brook below. And the idea is to preserve it with just adding just, you know, this, this small, uh, uh, bathing area. So um, in terms of kind of uh, sedimentation and erosion control, we're running silt fence kind of from, so the access would be kind of on that upper portion of the driveway with an anti-track apron, uh, with a silt fence running all the whole length of that drive, which would just be overland um, to get down into down below that guest house uh, to minis minimize disturbance to the, uh, to the you know, existing auto court and all that kind of stuff up there. And then in front of that, um, uh, we, we would install uh, uh, hay bales now uh, on this drawing, I, I actually had supplemental drawings that I, that I, I will email you. This one just shows two la layers of, of silt fence, but in speaking with John Cody and kind of a pre-application meeting, he suggested using hay bales as be, being a more kind of sturdy uh, backstop for any sort of, sort of sedimentation or, or erosion that might happen during the construction. Um, and then the, uh, I, I, I think that I, that I kind of touched on everything here. Um, I did include some photos of the project area. If if Julie, you could go down and just scroll through to the. Um, well, no, you don't the, need to do that, oh, Sam. We, oh, okay, we should, go ahead. We should go look at it. The first meeting Absolutely. really is to get a sense of what the proposal is, and then go look at it, because because otherwise we're just pictures don't really tell a story like your eyes do. So absolutely, Joe. Yep. Joe, do you have a a problem? Could we go look at it? Do you want to be there? Um, I I'd I'd like to be there just to say hello, but uh, but if it's just ex it's more expedient for you to be there, you know I'm not I'm there well, often. I'll tell you what I'll time. I'll text your is your number on the application. Uh, I'm not positive. Sam, do you happen to know? I I I don't think it is. I think I I put my down number as the agent, but I will get it to you guys. Sam, tomorrow. will you will you text that to Russ, please? Yeah, text problem. it to me, and then I will communicate with Joe, and we'll set up a site walk, Joe. Very I'd rather you be there. I don't want to just come trampsing on your property. You know? Totally fine. Yeah. Thank you. And then, then we'll look at it, and then we'll come back next meeting and ask questions and, and go from there. Does anybody hey. have any questions now that the applicant should prepare for? 
I mean, I don't because I want to see it first. Uh, I just, Russ, I just want to know, um, is that retaining wall that's uh, above the pool, is that existing right now? There's a, uh, there's a small portion, Rob, uh, that is existing. Um, it's, in, it's in kind of disrepair, so the idea would be to, to, be re to rebuild it. Okay, so my only question would be, why couldn't you access from the top versus constructing a temporary driveway? on that uh, i guess it'd be the north north and northwest side of the property it would be a pretty there's a there's a seven foot grade change from that auto court down to where that pool the pool area is so um it, it we would actually I, I think we would create more disturbance in with that upland review area if we were to come from that area versus coming from down below and you'll see um if you do go to the site down below that um the the kind of the guest house and office that joe uses is it's fairly level in there and you know it's for staging and that kind of stuff um so it it it, it, it seemed more prudent to you know use that areas for for staging the uh, you know soil any sort of sto soil stockpile and any sort of uh equipment okay all right uh sam you have my my phone number no would you mind giving that to me russ Yep, 860-748-0173. Great, I will text that to you. Okay, we'll look at it and we'll get back to your next meeting. And Joe, I'll, I'll, Excellent. we'll communicate and meet, okay? Wonderful, look forward to it, thank you. All right, thank you. Is that it, Julie? No, it's not. Um, let me get back to where we're going. Um, got John's report. Okay, I meant in applications, but good. Yes, applications, but actually you do have an additional, um, if you want to take it now or later, um, it's not really an application, but we did receive a notification um, that looking that uh, somebody's doing treatment for the pond, Yelding and Markovitz. So I actually- Yeah, that, that's every year, that's every year. All right. So do yeah. you want to talk about there during the meeting or it's a, it's a deep permit and and yeah. um he, he doesn't have much options than yeah. to do that. All right. So let me get back to where we need to be. Um so John, you want to report on your report? Yeah, certainly. Uh John Cody once again. Um Julie just had the screen up there to show the the jurisdictional uh, sign-offs that I did. It tapered off a little bit, as you can see, probably like a dozen there, possibly uh, 10 there. But um, scroll through. There's nothing outstanding going on in a wetland world in Roxbury that came to my attention. Okay, good. So the last thing will be the letter from you. Um, uh, you, you know, I'm on the Rip Shepog River Association, and I got the golden opportunity to go up and see the Shepog Dam, which was amazing. And I am going to set up a uh, field trip for the Wetland Commission. And then after the field trip, we're going to go to the GW Tavern and, and have a good old time. <laughs> but it's an amazing water system. We are in the tunnel where the water's diverted down to Waterbury. Uh, it, it really was a great trip. And I met Hugh Rogers there, who's on the Shepard River Association. And he sent a letter um, commending this whole commission regarding the property of 55 Garnet Road. Um, you know, he puts in his, his feelings on it, but I wanted to bring this up because, you know, one of the things he says, all too often we prioritize prioritize individual rights, not individual responsibilities to our community. And the result is that the community suffers. Our wetland regulations were established to protect not only the river and the land, but the citizens who adopted them to shape the kind of community they wanted. The question is not so much what one person can, can or not cannot do, but rather what is best for all of us in the river. Through your actions, you have shown that you will uphold the regulations and in doing so that you safeguard the decisions the community has made as a whole.
the land, the river, and I thank you. Hugh Rogers. So I, I thought that was great what he wrote. Uh, I can't, yeah, you know, I, I don't want to talk much about 55 Garnet Road because we're in court and it keeps getting pushed and I don't know. So uh, thank you, you. We really appreciate it. And thank you to the commission because you all deserve a pat on the back. Okay, is that it, Julie? That's it. All right, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. So Everybody move. wants to stay here? Oh, okay, yeah. second. <laughs> second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Right. Take care, Take everybody. Care. Bye. Bye.